On the agenda tonight, we're going to be having a listen to John Prine's The Speed of the Sound of Loneliness, performed by Kathleen Grace and David Steele. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So a quick bit of background behind this one because it was sent my way with a mind to look at the guitar a little bit because the person who did send in this request was struggling to get the same kind of feel and sound that David does in this performance. So we will bust the guitar out a little bit later on, but let's get Kathleen and David up on screen and see how they get on. On. Come on late, come on early You come home big when you're feeling small You come home straight, come home curly Sometimes you don't come home at all So what in the world come over you and what in heaven's name have you done you've broken the speed of the sound of loneliness you're out there running just to be on the run I'm gonna hide the bird I've got a weary and a jealous mind How can love last forever Get left so far behind What in the world has come over you And what in Heaven's name have you done You've broken the speed of the sound of loneliness You're out there running just to be on the run It's a mighty mean, dreadful sorrow That crossed the evil line today Now how can you ask about tomorrow We ain't got one word to say What in the world has come over you? What in the heaven's name have you done? You've broken the speed of the sound of loneliness. You're out there running just to be on the run. Out there running just to be on the run. Yeah, out there running just to be on the run. And there we have it. 
as always, there is going to be a link in the description below if you guys want to watch this again. It is from Kathleen's channel. I do believe it's her official channel, so head over there and give it a watch. Give her a subscription as well, because this performance is so stripped back and the guitar playing is so on point because you just get to hear every single pick and we're playing finger style here. And the thing is about David's playing, it's the dynamic approach that he has in that right hand in order to just get the fills and the little changes in melody that he's throwing in to the chords to just pop out. And it's all about that dynamic appreciation of the right hand and having the ability to do that. We will get the guitar out in a second, but just a quick word on the vocals and the way it is so laid back, but so up front because it is just their voices and a guitar, the harmonies, are spot on throughout the performance, but really in this talking range. And it's something about John Prine and his writing, the way that he could write a song that was in that conversational space, just from a pitch perspective vocally, but connect with you because of that conversational quality that the compositions and the performances had. I do have a video on the channel here on John Prine somewhere, so you can check that out independently if you want to. So just quickly getting into the guitar, we are capoed on the fourth fret, as you can see, standard tuning here, and I'm gonna be referring to the chord shapes as they are shape-wise and not pitch-wise because this is gonna be an E, technically, because we're on the fourth fret with our capo, but I'm gonna to refer to that as a C and a G and an F because those are gonna be the shapes that we're gonna be using in this song. And those are the only three chords it's all about playing, first of all, the right sequence with the right hand, and this is where the sequence does chop and change a little bit with David, because we've got this. That kind of approach, he does sometimes. Do that, just have a really subtle change in the strings that he's plucking with that right hand, and he doesn't have finger picks on, so this is why he can get that really soft sound and then get a little bit more aggressive with it as well. So just quickly getting into the picking sequence on the right hand, we're starting on the C. Like that and you'll see my third finger jumping from the A string to the E string, because on this first C chord, we've got that alternating bass line going on, and that's the only chord that that happens on. We then play an F, and that just stays straight to the G, that stays straight as well. And when we've got this picking, Using on the right hand the thumb, first finger and second finger, that thumb is going... So it's thumb on the A string, thumb on the D string, first finger on the G. And then I've moved my third finger all the way down to the low E string. And then we have a little pick there with that second finger on the B string. So it's thumb. And then thumb again on the D, first finger on the G. So that works out as. Like that. And you will see the way that David plays it is instead of getting that third finger to hop over, he's got that third finger on his low E string all the time. And then the little finger is playing on the A string. And I think for demonstration purposes, it's good to move the finger so that you can see where that root note actually changes or where that running bass line comes in. So we get this. And you can see it hop over. Because when you're just holding a shape, sometimes it's not clear as to which string is being plucked. Once you've got that sequence down in the right hand, you probably just want to have a go through the chords and just get that hand used to it. So we've got that. then going to be jumping to an F and the same thing with the right hand but now we're staying on the low E string with the thumb like that and then we jump up to the G back 
to the C. So just cycle that round and I'm playing it quite flat there dynamically. I'm not getting anything to jump out or going quiet in particular sections. And that is what you need to start to insert and get into your playing to get the same kind of sound that David does here. And there are fills that have been played as well. I haven't been through all of the fills, but I'll give you a basic outline. Sometimes David really does take the emphasis out of some of the strings, especially underneath the vocal, because you don't want to be thrashing out your chords when the focus should be on a lead vocal. And when we're playing the C, kind of approach where you can almost just hear the G and the B ringing out. Like that. So now when we get down to the F, we've got that same cycle and you're staying on the low E string now with the thumb. And we've got this little fill that comes in. Another thing that David does is really emphasize the fills between the chords. So I'll play that again. We have this. And that was a little hammer on of the second finger. Open G, hammer on to that second fret of the G string. And then just play that B string with that second finger. And the end of the fill is placing in this little finger because we're going into a G. Like that. And to begin with, you probably just want to play through the basic cycle. But once you get used to that, you can start throwing in the fills and get a little bit more involved with it. It might be something that you want to do consciously to play that F quite lightly with the right hand and then get that fill to really pop out. So we have this. That. And even there, you start to naturally do things dynamically, like at the end of that run, when I did get into placing the final note, I took a little bit out of it dynamically. And it's just something that happens naturally because of the way that you're feeling and the way that you're playing the run at that time. But once you've got used to that initial cycle of that right hand, then you can start throwing in the fills a little bit. and. It's something that you can go through this whole performance and listen to every single fill exactly, but it's more just getting into the feel of the performance. And once you get used to the fills, and then over to the G, you can also have down, I think that's one that David does, the He's actually now playing the G without that little finger on the third fret of the B string. So we get this. Like that. Obviously it's happening a little bit faster. It's not super fast. This performance and this version is slower than John's original. But when you start throwing in the fills, then it starts to sound a little bit more authentic, but you can just play the chords through straight with that sequence on the right hand. So just to give an example of the rough area that you wanna be in when you're playing through this, the thing that you'll find is that David, when he's playing the runs, he'll ascend, then he'll descend, and he'll just mix them up in exactly the same way that John did on the original. And, it's something that when you know the notes, you can just start to come up with little fills yourself. Anyway, we've got this C. To the F, fill, G. And you can throw in that little high E string because that's something that happens here with David. But you start to get the idea that between our chords, we're just throwing in those little fills and don't worry about having to rush to the next chord because the last note of the fills that I was playing there comes in before your root note of the next chord. So for example, when I had this like that. So you're not playing the notes at the same time. You can play and then get into your G. Same principle there.
there going into the C, that C and then the C below it just played one after the next, not at the same time. So when you are playing through this yourselves, it's gonna be a case of being mindful of the dynamics of the way that you're playing in order to get that expression in there. And when you're really used to the cycle on the right hand, the changing of the chords, then you can start putting the fills in and then you can start putting the dynamics in as well. If you're just playing a guitar by itself and you haven't got a vocal over the top, then you don't have to worry too much because people are just gonna be listening to the guitar. But if you have got a vocalist in there, it's gonna be a good idea to bring it down when the person's singing so people can focus on their voice. And then in between the chords, maybe get those fills to pop out in the same way that David does. He just pulls on those strings a little bit harder, just pops them just a smidgen more on those fills to get the note to really stand out. So you hear the fill and then you go back into that more somber sound of the chord and bring those dynamics down. So real subtlety here in the playing from David, fantastic vocally as well, considering that he's supplying that lead vocal with Kathleen and Kathleen's harmonies harmonizing together. It's such a relaxed performance and a great video to look at on a Sunday. Just sit back, relax, enjoy the artistry and the version that we're listening to, but also the original artistry by John Prine. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and requesting that I break the guitar down a little bit to get into the mood of how to perform this on guitar yourselves. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.